business story just in. It's bad news about Tom Jones' UK tour. He's doing it. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Crime Watch OK and we're joined this week by the head of the Manchester Fraud Squad, Chief Superintendent Al Jolson. Good evening Chief. Good evening Moira and good evening to you, the listening viewers who have tuned in your sets and are watching this programme. And to those of you who are not watching, may I say to you, you are neglecting your duties as a public citizen. Well for the benefit of viewers who haven't seen this programme before, obviously Al Jolson is a pseudonym. No, it is a non diploma I'm positive they mean exactly the same thing. Moida, Moida, please. As an experienced police officer who's been in the force for 25 years, my only falls are positive. Are you sure? I'm positive. <laughs> well, we start this week with a particularly vicious crime. Oh, goody, goody. <laughs> Will you tell us about it, Chief? Certainly, Ruby. <coughs> in February this year, three people were waiting in this optician shop for attention. When in March, two masked robbers burst through the door and stole the takings of nearly two pounds, 31 pence, exactly. <laughs> now, we said it was a particularly brutal crime, and some of the details of this case are so frightening <laughs> that I personally sat and typed this report myself. <laughs> and do you have any witnesses? Yes, the typist whose typewriter I bothered. No, <laughs> no, no, witnesses to the crime. Yes. Well, according to a reliable contact in the opticians... Contact? Yes, contact, contact. Lindsay's name. <laughs> According to his description, and with the help of our police artist using a pack of children's crayons, we've been able to build up a pretty accurate fitter photo of a man we'd like to interview. We believe this is the man. <laughs> we, we believe this man is the leader of the gang. He is precisely five feet inches, 13 foot tall. <laughs> Approximately, he had bright red hair, protruding teeth, has thick glasses, a large stomach, talks with a limp, and walks in a northern accent. At 11.30 a.m. last Thursday, two robbers struck again, and we believe it could be the same men who raided the optician shop, as according to an eyewitness, both men were wearing glasses at the time, and were perhaps confused, as you'll see in the reconstruction of our next crime. Now, this took place in a car wash on the high street. Could you tell us about it, Chief? Certainly, Vera. At approximately 12 o'clock, uh, precisely midday noon a.m., two masked robbers, who had incidentally cleverly disguised themselves by not wearing masks, burst into this car wash and shouted at what they thought was a girl bank teller. Oi, you in the yellow dress, get away from that alarm! Get out of the safe! But their robbery attempt was soiled when the machinery burst into life. They then gave each other the brush off and made a clean getaway. <laughs> Well, the robbers managed to escape, so police efforts were in vain. Uh, not entirely. We managed to get our police cars washed. <laughs> I come up with squeaky blue. Oh, look at that. Very nice. <laughs> well, we've had a few calls about the separate robberies, and from descriptions given by eyewitnesses, our police artist has managed to come up with another identical picture. Ooh. <laughs> That's a very familiar face. <laughs> So there we have it. And I think we should give a special mention to the talented police artist who drew these pictures. Well, obviously, there must be quite a few talented people hidden away in the police force that one is not aware of, Chief. Well, it's, it's funny you should mention it, but I'm a, a closet turn myself, you know. Oh, yes, I do a few impressions, you know. Impressions? Yes, uh, uh, with the voice, mm. for instance. Rock on, Thomas. Ball and cannon. <laughs> John. And here's one for the teenagers. Hi. No, it's the lip. I am Cliff Richard. I got myself a quiet sleep in walking, uh, talking, living thank you. Thank, thank you, Chief. Ah, oh, and I've just heard that there have been hundreds of calls. Oh, really? Helping with the case? <laughs> no, complaining about you. <laughs> well, that's it from Crime Watch OK this week. Good night. Hey, good night. <laughs>
welcome to The Frock Show. I'm the beautiful and lovely Selena Scott, and I'll be looking at fashion in Scotland. <laughs> and I'm the thinking person, Selena Scott. I'm Uriel Gray, and I've got an exclusive interview. Hello, I'm the incredibly unattractive Janet Street Porter, and I'll be taking a peek into men's underwear. Ah. <laughs> That'll hold no surprises for some of us, Janet. Ah. <laughs> right, well, as I promised you earlier, we now go up to Scotland, where I believe young Keith Chegwin has got something interesting to show us. Yeah, that's right, you might see if this rain keeps up and shrinks me kill. <laughs> no, seriously, Selena, we're going to be having a look at the latest fashion to come out of Socky Hall Street. It's the kamikaze kilt. Oh, that's super checkers. What's that barbed wire for? Well, it's been specially designed to deter nosy limbo dancers. <laughs> that's all very well, but what if the limbo dancers are very determined? Well, they've allowed for that, Selena, and in the spine they fitted a fail-safe device. <laughs> oh! <laughs> oh. <laughs> Oh, my word, Cheggers. I wouldn't like to tangle with that. Well, after the explosion, Selena, there wouldn't be much to tangle with. <laughs> oh, See you later, Selena. Bye. The bum says hot, the label says not. Oh. <laughs> well, as I promised, I'll be getting into men's underwear. No chance would be a fine thing. Now, the latest fashion in men's underwear are the incredibly brief R fronts. What in heaven's name are our fronts? Well, apparently they're the same as wife fronts, but they're so tight that when men sit down in them, they go, oh! <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, seriously, no. No, seriously, there's been a lot of new and exciting designs out in men's underwear ever since Princess Di, the royal trendsetter, announced that Prince Charles preferred silk boxer shorts to his polo shorts, which, as we know, are those boring little white ones with the hole in the middle. Oh. <laughs> anyway, earlier this week, I asked Princess Di which ones were Charles's favourites. <laughs> yeah, these are Charles's favourites. He calls them his UK shorts, because I've monogrammed them personally. Now, on here we've got the Cross of St George, and then there's a shamrock on that side. Mm. And we've got a thistle on this side. And, of course, there's plenty of room for a leak at the front. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't that funny. I was laughing at the R fronts. I get it, you see, R... Oh, blimey. Anyway, you are pleased you've got something for us. Yeah, that's right, Janet. Well, earlier on, I was lucky enough to interview Michael Jackson. Now, as you know, we all have the problem of getting old. Of getting old or what? <laughs> Thank you, Janet. Well, of course, Michael Jackson doesn't have this problem because he's avoided all of it with cosmetic surgery. And earlier today, I was able to ask him how this had affected him. Welcome to the show, Michael. Uh, would you like to sit down? I'll try. Oh! Are you sitting comfortably? I don't know. I'm numb from the neck down. <laughs> well, I understand that you've just had tucks put in your thighs. Not tucks. Pleats. Uh-huh. Well, I hear also, Michael, that you've had a general all-over skin tightening operation. Yeah. Does that affect you? Only when I nod my head. Well, then what happens? <laughs> well, obviously, Michael, you're trying to mould yourself into the perfect man, if there is such a thing. And for that, you're going to have transplants of Robert Efford's nose, Dustin Hoffman's ears, mm. Clint Eastwood's chin, Tom Cruise's teeth. Any other transplants in mind? Well, just one, but I'm having trouble persuading the donor. Who's that? Dolly Parton. <laughs> <laughs> Right, well, that's it for this week. But do join us next time when I'll be looking at the latest thing in ladies' clothes, Boy George. <laughs> and I'll be showing all you girls who can't afford expensive fashions how to make a do-it-yourself fair coat using two oversexed hamsters, a bag of buttons and a lot of patience. And I'll be showing you how to make a dress just like Marty Kane's using two Chinese takeaway trays and a roll of baker foil. <laughs> ah. So, for all this and lots more, join us next week. Good night. Good night. Good night. I was naturally gifted when I was there. A blooming good player, they tell me. 
But I wasn't keen to play football at all. So that's why I went and joined Chelsea. <laughs> now at AC Milan, I was number one man. I showed them some breathtaking play. I said to the eye ties, you've got to attack. But to them, that meant running away. <laughs> Cause football's a funny old game, my friends, and football's a funny old game. I was stuck overseas, I felt ill at ease. I was glad to get back on that plane. And then I joined Spurs, now that was a team. It was well before Clements and Oddle. But I was a loser, one hell of a boozer. Cause you can't win when you're on the bottle. <laughs> I thought I'd hit bottom around about then. Cause drinking's a terrible curse. And then I met Anne Diamond at TVAM to prove things can only get worse. <laughs> Cause football's a funny old game, my friends, and football's a funny old game. It's down and then up when you're in the club. Now Anne Diamond's exactly the same. <laughs> and now I've teamed up with me old Scottish mate, a duo called Greavesy and Sane. Now you may think his lines are straight off the cuff. Well, I'll tell you right now that they ain't. Cos Ian St John don't know what's going on. Cos it's me what carries him through. I'm witty and funny, he just takes the money for reading the old order cue. <laughs> Cos telly's a funny old game, my friends, and telly's a funny old game. Now money comes easy for Ian and Greasy just for being completely inane. <laughs> Thank you very much. Hello and welcome to another edition of Saturday Dead. Yes, my name's Ben Elton and I am an alternative comedian. If you want comedy, I'm the alternative. Okay, very nice indeed. Okay, Mrs Thatcher, Mrs Thatcher. Oh, there you are, a little bit of political sour. Very nice indeed. Didn't get a laugh. Must have a few young Tories in, fair enough. Okay. Keep talking, men, keep talking. Don't leave the gap. In case people start to realise it isn't funny. All right, okay. Now, a lot of people said to me, Ben, Ben, what is alternative comedy? Well, it's the same as ordinary comedy, but with all the jokes taken out. See what I mean? Yeah. Okay, I've got to keep my street cred. There you go. Alternative comedy, it's comedy without jokes. Okay, chatter, chatter, rabbit, rabbit. Oh, 30 seconds gone by, haven't mentioned bodily function or sexual organs. Okay, must be slipping. Okay, yeah. Well, I've got to keep my street cred going. All right, then, let's just say bottoms. Yes, bottoms. Yeah. Yes, bottoms, because that's the sort of word that always creases up the sort of audience we get on Saturday Live or Laugh at Flaming Wallpaper. Know what I mean? Okay, nice run, Ben. Oh, incidentally, oh, like the suit, 500 pounds plus a designer hairstyle. Pretty alternative, I don't think. Okay, yeah, Ben must be all right. He's knocking himself again, very nicely indeed. Okay, he must be all right. Where's his halo? Okay, 75 seconds gone by without a joke, and still no one has noticed. All right, very nicely. Okay, let me just make a few rude comments about Jimmy Tarbuck then, because that's a pretty anarchic subject for comedy, I don't think. Okay, knocking myself again, very nicely indeed. Got to keep my street grid going. Okay, a lot of punters said to me, Ben, what do you do when the other acts are performing on Saturday Live? Well, of course, what I do is I run into the toilet where I knock out another few episodes of Filthy Witch and Cat Flap. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Something in there just seems to inspire me. Know what I mean? Know what I mean? You've got to show one of my scripts because it comes attached to an Andrix puppy. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> got to keep my street cred My name's Ben Elton. Thank you and good night. Thank you.
Well, welcome back to Surprise Surprise. And it's now time for me to make one of my surprise phone calls. Now, I must admit, I love this bit of the show. And I especially love the fact that they always give me a new phone to use every week. Well, let's... Oh, oh, look at this. This week they've given me one. Oh, Bobby. Looks like a revolver, doesn't it? Hang on. Hang on, it is a revolver. Oh, oh this lot here at London Weekend, they've got such a sense of humour. I'm gonna... <laughs> You were watching last week, I phoned up Arnold and he said he'd come on this week. Well, I know he's waiting out in the wings. So would you all give him a nice round of applause for Arnold? Bless him. Oh, oh, are you all right, oh, Chuck? Yeah, I'm all Comfy. right. Yeah, yeah. Now, your wife wrote to me and told me that for years you've been looking for your younger brother, Reg. Yes, Is that I right, have. right, Arnold? Yes, I have, Sheila. Yeah. Old Reggie, my younger brother. Now, family. tell us, when was the last time you actually saw him? Oh, blimey, yeah. Sheila. It must be, oh, way back in the war. Really? Yeah. And you've had no luck finding him, have you? No, Sheila, no. Oh. No luck at all. Oh, well. Arnold. We found him for you. You haven't, Sheila, have surprise, you? Surprise, surprise! Oh, God! He's on no. tonight! Come oh. on, Michael, bring him in! Reggie! Oh. Oh. Reggie! Yeah. Oh, he died over 20 years ago. Oh. You got involved with some gangsters in the East End and a gold bullion robbery. Do you remember that, Arthur? Yes, well, everyone, in exchange for immunity and a new identity, you shot them all to the police, didn't you? Yes, sir. Well, that's right, Arnold. We've got them here tonight. Oh. Go, go. So come in, Mad Axman McGar. Now, I know you lads are going to have a lot, a lot of things you want to talk about after the show. <laughs> so I'm going to leave you to it. Hello, welcome to another edition of Celebrity Profile. This week, we'll be talking to a man who's been on the music scene nearly as long as Mozart. He is, of course, Cliff Richard. I've had nothing but bad luck Since the day I saw the cat at my door So I came into you, sweet lady Answering your Mr. Coco Crystal ball on the table Showing our future in the past Same cap with them evil eyes And I knew it was a spell she cast She's just a devil woman Cliff. Hi, Jonathan. Got my suit. <laughs> now, Cliff, dear heart, they call you the Peter Pan of pop. Even today, you still look remarkably young. To what do you attribute this? Yeah, well, I surround myself with much older people, Jonathan. <laughs> well, that's charming, isn't it? No, I, I put it down to uh, leading a, a good and honest and God-fearing life. I don't smoke, I don't gamble, I don't drink. Oh, and I don't miss about with women. 
And does that make you live longer? No, but it certainly makes you feel like it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, very witty. Now, I've been listening to a few of your early 78s, Cliff, and in those days you used to record with Hank and Bruce and the Shadows. Do you still see the boys anymore? Oh, sure. We get together about uh, 20 or 30 times a year for our final reunion concerts. Mind you, they don't tend to do their famous walk anymore. Oh, well, why is that? Well, the guitar leads tend to get snagged around their walking frames. <laughs> oh, I do love me. Anyway, Cliff, I believe you've extended your reign still further by appearing in that smash hit musical, Time. Tell us about that. Well, I have to, uh, I play a rock star who has to persuade the, the gods to spare the people of Earth from unnecessary suffering. And how did they manage that? Stop you singing? <laughs> <laughs> bitch, bitch. Now, uh, I believe the main god is betrayed by a giant hologram of Lord Olivier. Oh, Larry, yeah. Isn't it difficult working opposite someone who's two-dimensional, someone with no real substance? Well, no, you forget I made a record with uh, Sarah Brightman. <laughs> oh, that's right. Well, as luck would have it, I believe we've got a clip now of your audition from that musical, and it's coming up for us on your screen. Oh, super. <laughs> Hello, I'm here. Hello, anyone there? Tell me who you are. Yeah, I'm Cliff Richard. I've come to audition. What are you? I'm a singer. I entertain people. Not from what I've heard. Give me an example of the songs you sing. Sure, okay. Come on, pretty baby, let's move it and a groove it. Uh-huh. Next. What do you mean, next? What do you mean? I haven't got the lead role in time. Time? You're in the wrong theater, Sonny. We're casting for Phantom of the Opera. You mean you're not God? Well, some people think I am. I'm Andrew Lloyd Webber. Hallelujah. Well, Cliff, you're out of time now. Yeah, but I'm, uh, I'm going to do a gospel tour later no, this Cliff, year. No, Cliff, you're out of time. Finito. <laughs> so, thank you very much there, Cliff. And for me, Jonathan King, it's good night. But meanwhile, we leave you with one final look at one of Cliff Richard's greatest hits. How many times I can tell you Times when in a sense a trade for company And children saw me crying Oh, I thought I had my share of that But these missing nights Watch OK update. And we've already received a number of calls in connection with that raid on the optician shop we showed you earlier. And one or two of them have given us genuinely important leads. Well, one lady phoned to say that she was being fitted for a new pair of glasses at the time and saw all 20 of the robbers leaving the shop on a giant orange roller skate. My wife phoned to say she just put the dinner on and would I pick up a bag of chips on the way home? Thank you, Chief. <laughs> And that's it for this week. But we leave you with a few words of comfort from Chief Superintendent Al Joss. Oh, thank you, Annika. <laughs> so, wireless viewers, please remember, although crime figures are rising, 80% of criminals are never caught. So if you live alone, I'm coming to get you. <laughs> <laughs> well, we now have a more up-to-date identikit picture of the main robber. LAUGHTER